First, I would like to thank Prime Minister Abe for his remarks and for his the commitment to global health. This is the welcome assurance that Japan's contribution to global health, which began in earnest with the 2000 Kyushu Okinawa G8 Summit, will continue. I would also like to express my sincere appreciation to Margaret Chan, Jim Kim, and Bill Gates, and all of the other leaders in the global health community who have gathered here from around the world. I'm very pleased and honored to be here at the opening session of this conference. This conference is co-organized under a public plight and devoir that has been fostering partnership in the lead up to the Toyako G8 Summit in Japan more than eight years ago. That partnership was spearheaded by the Jap Japan Center for International Exchange, or JCIE, founded by the late Ta Taro Yamamoto as a part of its the Global Health and Human Security Program, and is working closely with key global health figures from around the world. In addition, this Global Health and Human Security Program launched a Global Health Working Group last year, which is tasked with making recommendations to the Japanese government for the health portions of the agenda for next year's G7 summit, for the health G7 summit, which Japan will host. We will have opportunity to hear from the working group members, its director and deputy director, Professor Shibuya and Hashimoto, later today, and a more in-depth discussion of their primary recommendation will continue at the round table tomorrow morning. I would like to thank all the co-organizers and the collaborating organizations for making this conference happen and for gathering such a great group of experts from across the globe. The Global Health Challenge requires collective action beyond the border of all kinds, including not only the national borders, but also the boundaries we often find between the ministries, administrative levels, sectors, disciplines, and organizations. This conference is part of Japan's endeavor to pursue a such interdisciplinary collective action. And I hope that this exercise will create uh, underpinnings for further action going forward. Through this conference, we aim to explore the role of the UHC, Universal Health Coverage, in the transition from the MDGs to SDGs, and in enhancing uh, preparedness and responses to health crisis based on lessons learned from the recent Ebola crisis. As Prime Minister Abe mentioned in his comment in the Lancet last week, the quote, Japan's global health priorities are to construct a global health architecture for that can respond to public health crisis and to build the resilient and sustainable health systems, unquote. In today's discussion, I would like to emphasize three points related to the global health architecture for all of us to keep in mind. First, since the Ebola crisis has become clear that we need to re redesign the global health architecture to respond to uh, further health crisis more effectively and more quickly. And I would like to emphasize that it is important to encourage each and every country to enhance its preparedness for crisis. The countries need to strengthen their capacity to implement the international health regulations as part of its effort to achieve the universal health coverage. We need to develop to we need to develop better coordination mechanism among relevant organizations at the outset of crisis. It is critical for us to come up with concrete ideas for incentivizing preparedness in all me mechanisms for responding to crisis. The second, the EBRA crisis has stressed that the global health architecture must also build the community resilience and take a community-centered approach. 
When we discuss the strategies, we should remind ourselves that the community is the target level where universal access to social services should be achieved and resilient to health crisis should be strengthened. Today, we should discuss how the global community can help each country pursue that kind of community-centered approach. And I am sure that the human security of which Japan is a major proponent can offer a good example. The third, the global health architecture should use the SDGs to help the countries design and implement their own policies along with their own priorities, taking into account the different national realities, the capacity, capacities and level of development. The role of the global community is changing now that we are transitioning from the era of MDGs. Further coordination and further cooperation among donor agencies and the programs should be enhanced. I very much look forward to today's discussion and believe that today's conference will drive a global collective action for pursuing health and well-being for all and ultimately achieving the SDGs. Thank you very much for your wonderful collaboration with us. I really hope that uh, the discussion we are having will be the really, really meaningful discussion to really achieve the universal health coverage for all the people in this global community. Thank you very much.